Hello everybody, welcome to uh, Dark Knight Camping, out for another adventure, a bit of uh, hammock camping, stealth camping tonight. Um, returning to a place that I last visited about six months ago. Never really did a camp here because of um, certain individuals. Now a lot of people said that I shouldn't come back here and do a video. Well, the plan of action today is I'm going to go nowhere near those people. Uh, I'm going to find a spot way back in the woods, away from all that kind of stuff. And we're going to complete the stealth camp here. And then that's it. That's another That's another uh, location marked off the map, isn't it? It's two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, sunset isn't until 5.53 tonight. So I've got plenty of time to scout out a spot to uh, put up the hammock. Uh, just turned 50 yesterday on this being recorded on the uh, the 6th of March. Yesterday was the 5th of March, uh, my birthday. Turned 50. Half a century old. <laughs> and I'm still out doing this. You know, doing what I love. Out in the countryside. It's awesome. It's just awesome. You know. It's not that cold really. Let's give, I think it's 8 degrees for the daytime and uh, three degrees for tonight. That's in Celsius, of course, not Fahrenheit. So those that work on the uh, Fahrenheit system, you can do the adjustments for what temperature it's gonna be tonight. But yeah, awesome little wood. So you can spot it just in the in the center there. Try and zoom in on it there. There's a tree leaning there, that's a widow maker. That's just propped up against that tree there. And that's what you're looking out for. It's not just a case just looking around on the ground at where you want to camp. When you're in a forest, it's not managed that well. You've got to be looking up in, in the trees as well to see what's knocking about. There might be some loose branches up there. It might be perfectly still now when you, when you set your camp up. But later on, for all we know, a, a weather front could come in, the wind, and all of a sudden, all that stuff that you've ignored up in the trees now becomes a danger to you. So it's one it's one thing worth looking out for. Always check the trees above you and make sure there's no widow makers about. I, I would say if there's any widow makers about, don't even think about camping anywhere near that area. Because where there's one, there will be more and you probably miss one. Yep. We're looking forward to uh, spring and summer. You can only feel, you can only feel it. it's getting warmer in the day. It's not as cold as it was as it was last week, really. At the end of this month, I think it's um, March 21st. Our clocks go forward and spring begins. So that's gonna be good. And I'm looking forward to not having to carry as much equipment because not only do you have to carry camera equipment, you have to carry all your um, cold weather gear and you can kind of reduce that down as the weather gets warmer. You don't need to take maybe, you know, a sleeping bag liner. You can just take a, an ordinary, ordinary two season sleeping bag. And, you know, if the weather's really nice, you don't even have to bother with a tarp sometimes. You can just take your hammock out and stuff like that. But yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous out here. Look at that. It's amazing. So I found one little spot, which is in there. And the reason I picked this is, is because I've noticed there's not much tree fall. In fact, there's hardly any tree fall in there. And all the trees go straight up. There's no leaning over, there's no widow makers, or anything like that. So that looks pretty stable in there to me. So this is one spot that I'm, uh, I've earmarked to come back later. I'm still gonna keep looking around because we might find the perfect spot. If we don't, this is where I'm going to be coming tonight, is in here. So the only issue I've got with coming this early is we've got loads of dog walkers about. Absolutely loads of dog walkers. I've just noticed a path going through there as well. Sometimes you have to come out and uh, scout the area that you're going to be camping in. You've got no choice, I mean, I've made this mistake before that uh, you can look on Google Earth and Google Maps all you like, but you don't know how old those uh, locations are or how long 
ago those photos were taken. I'm sure I'm not alone. When people have been caught out, you've scouted out a spot on Google Earth, you've gone to it, and then it's nothing like what you thought it was going to be like from the uh, from the uh, image on Google Earth. So there's nothing you can't do any better than putting boots on the ground and actually reconning the area you're going to be camping anyway. And sometimes the only way you can do that is to come early and have a walk about, have a look around, and see see what's there. That's the only way you can do it. That guy there was following me, so I just stopped. And he, as soon as I stopped, he turned off and went that way. Don't know if he's a, a landowner or anything like that, just checking up. Might be a uh, game warden or something like that, making sure there's no poaching going on. But yeah, I've checked, and this is this is actually public footpath. It's public right away, so I've got no issues here. And like I said, if I get asked to move on, camping and stuff, you just move on. So I'm having to wait off on setting up all my gear because this place is absolutely full of dog walkers. They're everywhere. Everywhere I try and go and set up, they appear. And there's all like little tracks going through the woods and stuff. And you, you, you go to a point and you try and set up and then there's a, there's a dog walker coming through. And it's not so bad out here because, you know, it's, it's on a hiking trail. So it doesn't look out of the ordinary that you've got a massive backpack on but what would look out of the ordinary if I start getting on my kit out and set up a hammock and a tarp that would look out of the ordinary so I've got to kind of wait for a bit we've got about two hours left of uh, daylight it's four o'clock now and sunset is um, 5.52 tonight so by that time I need to be in my spot and ready to get things set up and it doesn't look like that's going to happen at the minute I am staying, I'm staying, I'm not going back or anything, it's just um, it's just getting the right moment to go in and and do the camp. It should die down a bit, as soon as it starts to go dusk there should be less and less dog walkers and I've got more of an opportunity to go and set up my kit. Just going to have some uh, peanuts and a little bit of water. So the plan of action is I've decided to move out of this area for a little bit and come back later. Uh, temperature is starting to drop now. I'm going to have to put my gloves on in a bit. Sun's going down, it's getting low in the sky now. And yeah, I've put my gloves on, it's getting cold. Really wanted to be at this point, I wanted to be set up and uh, just chilling out in my hammock. But like always, <laughs> it doesn't always go to plan. It's just a case of just walking around and waiting for the right moment to do everything. So in there it wouldn't be too bad, but... This is what I'm talking about. There's still loads of people walking about in the woods with the dogs. And it's like these little paths where I'm trying to get in and set my stuff up. And you try and do it, then all of a sudden you come across some people. It's annoying. Sun's getting low in the sky now. About a little over, just under an hour. It's going to be very, very dark in these woods. And I don't want to be walking around here in the dark. It's like, I've looked around in these sort of woods here, and there's just no point. There's no point trying to walk through them, because it's like they've got divots and troughs and all kinds of stuff trying to walk through there. And plus you've got these like low branches that, that are basically invisible in the dark. And I don't want to like putting my head torch on when I'm doing a stealth camp. That's the last thing I want to be doing. So, failing anything else, I'm going to pick out those other two spots that I went to earlier. And we'll, uh, we'll see what they're like. It's still quite boggy in here. 
there's nowhere, there's literally nowhere to go in there because I've been looking in these woods here and it's all tree falls, all like massive branches that have been blown down by, by the wind. There's widow makers everywhere in this bit. So this is not an ideal place to camp, hammock camp at all. You can see them all up there. There's just row after row of trees just leaning on each other. These, these are after the storms we had in the winter. You can see them up there leaning against each other and you don't want to be going in there and there's, there's evidence, there's loads of evidence of tree fall everywhere. You can see the big branches on the ground everywhere in there and it's like no, I'm not taking the risk. It's just frustrating but this is what camping's all about. It's sometimes you are going to be walking around in the woods for a long time until you find a spot to camp in and it's it's worth keep walking around rather than just settling in a dangerous spot and then regretting it because you either get injured or worse it's just not worth it guys you may as well just walk around find a spot and I, i'm not going to do this but in some cases if you can't find a decent spot to camp then the safest bet is always to head back and not just settle and like i said camp anywhere and risk your life it's just not worth it but there's no way i'll be camping in here not a chance there's like tree fall everywhere in here this is what you're looking out for and if you see anything like this it's probably not a good idea to camp in that particular spot because nine times out of ten there'll be more trees like this that are rotten that have just sheared off and it doesn't need wind to do it it can just happen at any time they can just come down where they want and I can see loads of dead trees in there. There's absolutely loads of dead trees. This, this forest hasn't been managed in a long time. And this is what happens. It leaves it very dangerous. And not ideal for camping in at all. Like I said, you're not just looking on the ground for it to be flat. You're also looking up in the trees to see what, what is up there as well. Because, you know, you don't like coming down in the night. Another badger set. All around here. Recent activity as well. We can see little claw marks on the floor. Sun's starting to set. Over the trees. So this is the uh, hammock set up for tonight. It's not the most ideal place. It's right next to a road. And when about I would say about six feet away from the footpath which is just here so it's not very stealthy but because we're out in the countryside it doesn't really that matter that much you see this is where the path is and that's where my uh, <laughs> that's where my hammock is I'm not gonna bother with the tarp yet see what happens it starts to rain I can quickly get the tarp up and get it all sorted but as of yet I'm not going to bother that's amazing over there, look at that sun going down just behind the trees and then over there zoom in a little bit and it focuses you're going to focus, there we go got a castle in the mist, that's awesome over there look Still here, the dog walkers. Still people walking the dogs about. The 
sun just going down. Gone trees. Again, don't do it justice, the camera. Sun going down behind the trees. So we can get one last shot of the castle over there. There it is. See the towers and everything on the hill. It's like a fancy movie at the minute, you've got like a castle on the hill over there and then over there you've just got that amazing, that amazing sunset over there, look at that, wow. <laughs> looks like, uh, that looks like Sauron's eye out of <laughs> Lord of the Rings, that's amazing. Look at that. It's like the sky's on fire over there. Right guys, just having a walk out in the dark, bit of an explore. Just done some night vision stuff. Can't really see a lot with the trees being so dense. All Switch it back on again down here in a bit. Have a look. Just seen some eye shine in the woods, so probably foxes and badgers knocking about. Can't really see my face on this thing, can you? I miss the old camcorder because that did used to record me in night vision, but it just wasn't. I might actually start bringing that out actually in replace of the night vision goggles because sometimes they are big and bulky and they're, they're pretty heavy they keep bringing out all the time but we'll see temperatures proper drop now it's last time i looked it was about just hovering above uh, freezing there was some frost starting to form on the ground a little bit but yeah see my breath i think No, that's better, you can see my face now. It's a bit better. Let's switch to red mode. Red light mode, there we go. You can see my face a little bit. That's it. That's better. Yeah. It's very, very still. There's no wind or anything. Just have a quick walk about and then head back and get my head down. We have to be up early in the morning to get out of here because I don't know what time the dog walkers are coming. And we're being so close to the path, we'll be up and gone or at least packed up and sat down somewhere. And I can have a hot chocolate before I go and uh, catch the bus home. And that's another thing, I, I don't actually drive, I don't drive so everywhere I come I have to get public transport out to it. Or but I just have to bite the bullet and walk out to it. Uh, yeah. So I haven't got the privilege of transport. That's why I'm limited at the minute as the place I can go. I'm hopefully this summer going to be doing some uh, Kinder Scout um, camping. So quiet. Can't even hear any birds, can't hear any badgers barking or foxes or anything. It's quite eerie when it's like this. Right, I'm gonna head back. I'm gonna head back because I'm getting a bit hungry. Getting a bit hungry, it's getting a bit chilly. I wanna get back in the uh, sleeping bag and stuff before it gets any colder. Hey guys, so back at the uh, hammock now. Let's go have something to eat. Got some of uh, these and that's some 
pork belly. I put it on screen. I cut these earlier uh, to save me time because I didn't want to cook out in the woods. I just couldn't be bothered. So I didn't know if I'd find a pl find anywhere or anything like that. Luckily, I was right. So I cut these earlier. I'm gonna enjoy these, and uh, I'll come back and I'll talk to you in a bit, guys. Hey guys, I'm in the, the hammock, settling down for the night. Here I am. <laughs> In the hammock, setting down for the night. I'm gonna get some shot eye now. So I'll see you guys in the morning. Morning. It's uh, it's nearly ten past six in the morning. It's pretty cold. Um, it's very very misty out. Didn't get below car coming. Obviously, since that talking, there's gonna be a car coming. Wait for that to go past. Yeah, I didn't get down below zero last night. I think it was just it was just on uh, one degree last night. It was still pretty cold though. I did notice when I was walking, the ground did start to start to uh, freeze a little bit, but now nah, nothing after that. Had a really good night in the hammock. Really good night. A bit of condensation on the top, but that's expected because it's it's misty and it's foggy, so it's, the mist is going to collect somewhere, isn't it? Uh, inside the hammock, perfectly warm sound. Uh, my one tigress on the blanket did the job. Uh, my two season sleeping bag OEX with the uh, fleece liner in it, perfectly all right for you know about one degree. Um, yeah, had a really good night's sleep. So I'll bring you guys back when it gets a bit lighter and we can have a bit more of a chat. You see that's really misty and foggy. Out. Somebody caught up with a troll cam already. Don't care now, we did the camp. You see that's really misty and foggy out. Somebody caught up with a troll cam already. Don't care now, we did the camp. Yeah. Right guys, we're all packed up, ready to go. As you can see, leave no trace. Oh Andy, I'll show you in a minute. That's where we were between those two trees, the hammock. Nothing about. No rubbish or anything. Treat the countryside with respect. That's the stealth campers creed. Treat your area, the countryside with respect. About to put my hood up. It feels like it's raining. This is what I was talking about last night. It feels like it's raining, but it's not. It's just all the water droplets condensing on the branches. And then because the wind's blowing the branches, it's just like, it's shaking. And the water's falling everywhere. It's awesome. We are nearly out of the wood, guys. Going to the end. entrance to the woods is just down here, well forest, and we will be out, so we'll be careful around here because it's got increasingly more boggy since yesterday when I came in, 
this is all because of the mist it's made everything damp right this is the way we are out this is the way as the Mandalorian would say See, this is, that's what I'm talking about. Just leaving a fire like that, it's just like, just cover it up. Throw it away, cover it up, scatter it. Put some leaves over the top of it, you know, scarring the land and shit. That, that's what annoys me. That's why we're not allowed to go in woods or stealth camp here in the UK. It's because people that do things like that, out we are out so that's it guys end of another adventure I'm gonna leave it here before we get towards the main road where I can't talk anymore you won't be able to hear me so yeah thank you to all my new subscribers people liking my videos leaving comments that sort of thing it's much appreciated and I will see you guys in the next adventure this is Dark Knight Camping signing off